Okay, our next series of topics here is now going to be um, the, the what's called Poisson processes. And this will be something that we'll revisit uh, throughout the course because the, it's um, it's actually a pretty, pretty involved topic. Uh, you could teach an entire semester on this topic uh, in some way, and it comes up in a lot of places. Um, but it's also very interesting and kind of shows how exactly how general and how how general we can get even with the the tools we've we've been able to build so far um so the idea is this let me um let me start with uh start with a um what we're actually going to call a random scatter. So a Poisson random scatter. And so the idea is this. Um, we're looking for a probability model for, let's say, the appear the location of raindrops falling on a roof uh, radioactive particles and this is actually where uh, one of the initial applications of Poisson processes was radio radioactive particles hitting a metal plate or a, some kind of plate um, you know I guess you could you could say it's for you know, uh, bullets hitting a region, you know, in a target space and what have you. So we're going to let R be bounded. Uh, so, so what we're thinking about is we have some kind of region and we'll make it be a square region here. So we have a region R. So R is a bounded two-dimensional region. And a realization of this process, so we have some kind of process and a realization of the process is a set of points. Uh, which we can call hits, we'll call them hits in R. So, um, you know, for example, we might see points in these in these spots. Okay, and what we're what we're actually modeling is we are modeling the. You know, it, it, this is this is where um, this is where uh, you know the the reason I put this um, this this lecture at this part in the course is that. It starts to show you how you can use your imagination, even with the tools we have so far, to model some situations that otherwise might seem a bit abstract or a bit hard to, to deal with. So thinking about points hitting, points scattered in space, we haven't talked about anything like that yet. Um, we've just talked about, you know, random numbers, tossing coins, rolling dice, things like that. And actually, even with that, we're able to model this. And the way that we're able to model it is not by say by coming up with some complicated description of how points fall into this region, but actually uh, by using what we already know. And the, and what it is is what 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 that means. First of all, let me make clear. So each of these points is an example of what we're calling a hit. Okay, these are our hits, and. If we carve out a subregion of this of this space, okay, call that subregion B. We're going to we could do this for any region we want, and we're going to write n sub B to be the number of hits in B. So it doesn't matter where they're located in B. We just count how how much of them how much they are. So in the example above, 
the number of hits in B is two. Okay, now we've transformed something that is a pattern in space to something that we know about, which is distributions of numbers, right? And so how might we make sense of this? Well, first, we, need, we, do, make, we, need, we do need to make some further assumptions. Um, one assumption is that there are only finitely many hits. Okay, so then what this is saying, you know, how do we formalize that if we put a probability on the number of hits in the region R, so just like we put a set B, R can be the region, the number of hits in the region finite with probability one, there are no multiple hits. So in any given place, so how do we formalize that? In any given place, um, for any given point, so if we have an individual point in this space, the probability that n is equal to zero or one is equal to one. So there's no way that for a given point, uh, this is for all points in R. So the set, the set around B, the point, is the singleton set. So it's saying if I identify a specific point, uh, let's say right there, and I say how many points are going to, how many times is that going to get hit? It, it can't get hit twice. It's too small, right? It's too unlikely to get hit, hit twice, but, you know, maybe... Maybe it'll get hit once. It's still unlikely to get hit once. So it's unlikely to get hit once. So it's extremely unlikely to get hit twice is the idea for any specific point. And then we assume independence and homogeneity. And what do we mean by that? Independence. What that means is that for any, so let's take any k bigger than or equal to two, and let's take non-overlapping subregions. Say b one up through b k. So we take. BK, we take K non-overlapping subregions of R um, of the same size, let's say, of the same size. And by size now, since it's a two-dimensional space, when we say size, we mean area. Then Indicator I B one I B K are I I D independent, identically distributed. Uh, they're indicator variables, so they're I I D Bernoulli's. Um, where we define I of B J. Yeah. to be one or zero, it's one if there is at least one hit in BJ, otherwise it's zero. Okay. Now, we're not gonna prove this in depth because this actually would require techniques that we're, that are beyond our, our capabilities. Um, I will give um, some intuition for where this comes from because the intuition really comes from uh, pulling together a lot of the ideas that we've already seen uh, in this course. But how does this, but, but what these assumptions lead us to is what we'll call the Poisson random scatter theorem.
which is under the assumptions above. So under assumptions one, two, three above, there exists positive in it, positive real number lambda such that for each region, subregion B, the number, so what's this? The number of, uh, Number of number of hits, number of points that fall on B is Poisson with parameter lambda times the size of B, lambda times the area of B. This is where we define this notation to be area of B. And if we have disjoint sets, B1 through BK, disjoint, then these counts are independent. So they're independent Poisson counts. So this would be called, so then the process of points described this way is called a Poisson, we'll just call it a Poisson point process with intensity lambda. Now, so it's a Poisson point process. It can also be called a Poisson random scatter with, with intensity lambda. It can also be called a homogeneous Poisson point process. The homogeneous part comes from this third assumption here where regions of the same size have the same, or IID, the identical, the identically distributed portion. Um, you'd have to take a more advanced course in stochastic processes to get into inhomogeneous processes. Uh, it's good to know that they exist, but um, it's a bit, uh, a bit beyond the scope of what we're talking about here. Okay. So um, let, let me, uh, let's, let's do a little bit of intuition first before we get into the, uh, the logic behind why this is true, because the logic behind why it's true is important to, it's important to think about because we, it brings together it starts to develop intuition around a lot of the tools that we've we've developed so far. Um, how do we interpret lambda? Well, for each region, first is that for each, oh, I should say, I said here, the process of points. What is the process of points? The process of points is, is this is the process that governs where these points fall, right? So again, it's just like a random variable when we, before we roll the dice, the, the value on the dice, that's the sum of the values on the dice, that's a random variable, right? We don't know what's gonna come out. There's a random process that's gonna generate it. Once when the dice have been rolled, it's a realization of the random variable, right? Um, so we think about before we scatter these points, there's some distribution that governs where they're going to fall. Once we observe the scattering of points, we've observed a realization, right? So the process, the point process is the distribution. It's the random variable in this case, so to speak. Now, we don't call it a random variable. This is a little bit of terminology. So, um, a random variable we did define as a function into the real numbers. So specifically a random variable for us is a real number, is a number. This is not a number. This is a scattering of points. So we don't call it a random variable. We call it a point process. 
But uh, for all intents and purposes, they are the same type of thing, which is to say there's some, we think of it as some random mechanism that generates where these points fall and we're trying to describe the distribution. Okay, so for interpretations for each region, right? We've, we've said that N sub B by the theorem is Poisson lambda size of B. Um, and so that tells us what? That tells us that the expectation of N sub B by, by properties of the Poisson distribution, we know this expectation is lambda times the size of B. And therefore we can think of lambda as the expectation of the size of B divided by, no, the expectation of number of points that fall in B divided by the size of B. So in this case, lambda is the expected number of points, call them hits, number of hits per unit area. Okay. And then what can we say about the probability of having exactly one hit in a given area B, but then divided by the size of B. So relativized to the size of B, obviously larger, uh, larger regions, there's going to be kind of a sweet spot where as you hit us, as, as you, um, as you get smaller and smaller, that probably having any hits in B is really small. Um, but what can we say about this? Well, the probability of having exactly one hit in B by the Poisson distribution is, remember it's Poisson with parameter mu is e to the minus mu, mu to the power k over k factorial, where k is the number of hits. Here k is one, and mu is lambda times the size of B. So it's e to the minus lambda size of B times lambda size of B to the power one, over one factorial, which is just one, and now divided by the size of B. Okay, so let's simplify that a little. It just comes out to be lambda e to the minus lambda size of B. And so what does that tell us? This converges, this gets closer and closer to lambda as the size of B goes to zero. So as we shrink B down, as we shrink B down, um, the probability of exactly one hit in B is rel relative to the size of B is converging to lambda. So how do we interpret this? This tells us that lambda is the probability. So it's not just the expectation, but it's the probability of having exactly one hit per unit area as the area tends to zero, as the area gets smaller and smaller. So those are some interpretations of how we think about this. And the reason why we want to have those interpretations is that sometimes, I mean, the reason why we do all of this stuff here in this course is because we want to eventually use the theory and the math developed in this course in some kind of an application, statistical applications generally. In order to use this stuff in an application, we have to validate that the assumptions are valid, right? That they make sense in a given situation. So we have to have enough intuition about what those assumptions mean and what they imply in order to assess whether they're good to make in a given situation. So next thing we're going to come back and what we'll do is we will um, go through a sketch of the proof of this uh, random scatter theorem to try to continue to develop that intuition.